Hey traders out there in Traderland, D7 here with Grok Trade, and welcome. We have a big five points I'm gonna be sharing with you at the end of this video about the recession. Tune in for that. All right, long and short of it, we're gonna get into the markets. Markets were big time bullish this week. Guess what? There were leaks about a 50 point basis point, 50 basis points cut by the Fed next week. And the markets have rallied due to that. It'd be interesting to find out if we do get a full 50 point um, basis point cut or not. Um, they're talking about 25 to 50. They're thinking 50 and probably by the end of the year, they're looking for a full point cut. But will they do 25 right now, 25 and then a 50? Or will they do a 50, 25, 25? Anybody's guess. I don't care. Here's why. Guys, here's a mentor moment. Let me just get into this right now. I used to have things services for pit feed where you could get the noise on the the noise coming in. I well, I got to be careful there. I wasn't subscribing to it. I had access to some of this. Anytime the pit noise would increase, they would people investors would make buy decisions or sell decisions off of that and people would trade off of news, they would trade off of earnings, they would trade off of all these different things, and I finally woke up to reality. And I found out that raw data tells the tale. In other words, price, whatever price is, is reality. Price is, in fact, raw data. So I don't care what the news is. I care about how the price reacts to it. Technical analysis is king for that very reason. So let's get into technical analysis. And we're looking at the S&P 500 chart, daily chart using TradingView. There's a link down there. You can have a free subscription with TradingView. It's great. And they interviewed me a couple months back. Look for an interview on trend lines. Um, Trading View interviewed me, and you'll see a lot of trend lines here. Why? Because the markets have been crazy loco. I'm telling you guys, get these lines and get them drawn correctly. The S&P is at major, major resistance. Two major trend lines coming in. That is a area of major resistance. It could blast through. It could do that. It could come crashing back down. It could do that. But would, do, would you rather be a buyer at resistance or a seller? That's what you gotta be asking yourself. Let's look at the diamonds. If you look here at the diamonds, we're up nearing all-time record highs again. We have a we have resistance that we're coming up to. We're almost there. Big big volume on this daily chart. The Qs, which is tech heavy. If you look at this, last week we broke over that trend line. We talked about it in t in in or um, Thursday. We broke over that internally. We were talking about it Friday. We got follow through. So we've gone up one, two, three, four, five every day. The markets have gone higher. If you look here at the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000 small caps just had a huge day up two and a half percent on Friday. Are you kidding? That's just huge. Big volume, guys. Again, news breaking that there's a good chance of a 50 basis point cut happening next week. And we go up, 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 up. Here's what I want to pay lean in here. Pay special attention to what I'm getting ready to show you. Symmetrical triangle. Do you guys see it? Do you see the moving averages, how they coiling together? Let me show you the last time they coiled together. They come, we, we coil, we coil, we coil. See how all the moving averages come together? Look for a big pop or drop. We got a pop here, do you see it? We're doing that again, coiling, 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 coiling. Moving averages coming together. Look for a major pop or drop. Now, I think we're gonna bounce around here in this area. What's interesting is we still have the election coming up. So, and but next week is a major news. Now, well, what is, buy the rumor, sell the news, buy the rumor, sell the news. I'll say it one more time, buy the rumor, sell the news. Is that what we're dealing with right now? Rumor is 50 basis points. It's already built in. Will we sell into the news if and when it happens next week? I'm telling you, that will tell me a lot. If there's a major sell-off that takes place, uh-oh. Uh oh, financials very important. We look at that. If you now financials lagged them uh, all the major markets on Friday. Everybody was up, especially small caps. Everybody up, 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 up. But financials were slightly higher. But look how weak financials have been. Do not 
let that be lost on you, my friend. Financials are very, very important. The market is only strong. It's the financials there to support them. So this is problematic. Financials are showing relative weakness. Not a good thing. U.S. dollar down, down, down. Bear flag. We're in a downtrend. We're in a bear flag. It could get nasty. It could drop again. But what? look at these lower shadow and lower shadow. Friday, lower shadow, this lower shadow. This is buyers coming in, meaning that the, they're saying this is as low as it wants to go. Even though it's got a bear flag, this thing could keep crashing down lower. This area, it could happen. It could happen. I'm really watching this one closely. Gold is on fire, just straight up. What does that tell us? If people are shoveling dollars into gold, what does that tell you? Tell me in the comments what that tells you. Silver uh, was up 2.7% on Friday, 2.75% breaking a major trend line is coiling. Symmetrical triangle and then boom to the upside, breaking the major trend line. Very, very good. VIX down 3%. And if you look at this, um, we're just down, 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 down to a major area of support. Ooh, that could be problematic. And a quick look here, guys. Let's go to the weekly charts. I got to show you some very, very key areas. So every bar here is one week, okay? Weekly charts. Spiders, SP 500. Last week, major sell-off. This week, a major pop in large part with the rumor of the cut, rate cut. We're at major resistance. Do you guys see that? Major resistance. We're right there at it. What's going to happen? Rising wedge, rising wedge, more bearish than this bullish. And this could, we got to watch this because this could get slippery dickery dock straight down the clock. Okay, you got to be careful watching that. If you look here at the diamonds, if you look at this, um, up the rising wedge, more bearish than is bullish. Rising wedge, guys, look it up. Go to free online trading education.com. Hold on, let me pause. Free online trading education.com. Go to the chart school, look at rising wedge. And if you go to the indicators and oscillators, we, you can use live charts on where it, their trading view charts. You can put in any ticker symbol you want to look at what that ticker symbol, what that stock looks like with that individual or correlating indicator. Super cool. If you look at the Qs this week, we broke a major trend line. Look at this. Boom. Broke it. That is really bullish that it closed above that trend line. Let's see what happens. That is my cell phone every time i'm on doing videos i maybe my phone just does it all the time but look at this symmetrical triangle this is a symmetrical triangle in the russell 2000 big it's coiling guys coiling 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 i don't have moving averages on here but this is getting ready to make a major move it has a better chance of going up than down because it's a pennant at the top of a run however it can go any direction financials if you look at the financials if you go up, 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 rising wedge, it, it's rising wedge here, guys, not good. And I got a red line here. It means we got bearish divergences in place. Bearish divergences in place. So on a weekly chart, do we like that? Nope, because that's bearish unless you're a bear. Unless you're a bear. U.S. dollar on the weekly chart is down, 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 chopping around at a support area. Gold for the week, again, is up 1%, just a huge. It had a rising wedge, which is more bearish than is bullish, but to Friday, it just, or this week, it just broke it. So if this comes crashing down soon, that will be a jab. If it stays above those lines, then that rising wedge is null and void. Get rid of it. Quick look at Bitcoin on the weekly chart. This is kind of a big bull flag bouncing off this area of support. If it can break over this line, this thing could get pretty bullish. So be watching that. Whoa, no, hold on, hit my thing. Turned off my lights, I did all sorts of stuff. So let's get, let's get this going. So there it is. Now, you made it to the end of the video. So now I told you I was gonna share something with you. So let's get into that. Let's get into that. So the thing I want to share with you, and I'm going to read it, is what are we dealing with? What are we dealing with in the markets as far as a recession is concerned? Is it going to happen? Here are some points. I said five points. I think there's looks like eight here. The bond yield inversion. The bond yield inversion has. Let me quickly look. 
Let me quickly look at the bond yielding version. We are now diverted. It is no longer inverted. Guys, what I'm showing you right here, what I'm showing you right here is huge. <laughs> okay, let me walk you through this. This is looking at a one or a two and a 10 year bond yield, a two and a 10 year bond yield, okay? When it inverts, when it goes under this red line, the zero line, it has nearly a flawless record showing a market drop thereafter. So if you look, I gotta do this. Like see this big mark, market drop, this is a monthly chart. So this is the, <clears throat> the, the S&P 500 going from 422 down to 361, that was a huge drop. But we slightly went, had a negative, if you look at this, a negative bond yield inversion. That red line that you see coming up shows when the inversion corrects itself. This is huge, I mean, man, this is worth the price of admission. <clears throat> and if you go over here, this was a bigger inversion. So this is basically the, ten, the two year bond paying more than the 10 year. So it's inverted down here. When it correct itself, we put a red line up there and we were already in the throes of a major market crash. And this is the technology bubble crash right there. Do you see that? Just a huge, nasty crash. All right, good. Then we had some others. We had a little small one that took place. One month down, one month up, correction. And then we had this drop. And then we had a little larger one here came up and then immediately went back down and came up again. So two of them back to back, up, down, up, down. And then we had the Great Recession thereafter. We get the M for murder, Great Recession, a huge market drop, okay, just monster. Then we go on and on and on and on. We don't have anything forever, ever, ever, ever. And then we get this weird one. It goes down slightly. It's just barely negative and it immediately corrects itself right before the corona crash. Okay, fascinating that that happened. So that negative bearish divergence, okay, or I'm sorry, <clears throat> inverted bond yield. That happened right before the corona crash and, and diverted, meaning it corrected itself. Wow. You go over here, we drop into another one here, and it's the deepest, longest inversion that we have ever experienced, and today we correct itself for the month. Now, the month isn't over yet, so I haven't added a line, but what that tells me is we um, are in trouble. Trouble! So it's at the month ends, and we go over, and I add a line, okay? Vertical line. <clears throat> Study show with 100 days is kind of the top of the market. On average, it could be sooner, it could be later, it could never happen again. Even though this is virtually 100% true, like flawless on the signaling of, of a recession, it doesn't mean it can't be wrong. Always remember that. So I always look for other indications to say, hmm, do other things correlate with the idea of us going into a recession? But this is a big one, that's a big dog. So let's look at this. Next, the SOM rule. The SOM rule has been 100% accurate to date identifying a recession and has signaled a recession already. So the SOM rule, that has happened. And that is saying that now I have the bond yield saying, yep, inverted, and we have corrected that inversion. We are going into a recession. The SOM rule says we have recession. Both of them are either 100% or close to 100% when uh, being correct, okay? Now I have two of them saying this. Unemployment rate and job market, despite the SOM rule's near, tri um, near trigger, it's not a near trigger, uh, it's near trigger just because it hasn't closed for the month yet. Recent data shows that unemployment rate slightly Retreating, okay, suggesting a mixed signal on job market health. So the job market, there's a lot of big companies out there that are already saying they're gonna be doing layoffs. That is a telltale sign we're in a recession when that happens, that people are already 
saying that's gonna happen. What was it, Adobe um, today that came out and missed earnings by 1%, but it dropped by 8%. It's showing how people aren't liking the risk that we're in right now. Okay, so um, consumer sentiment and spending. Consumer sentiment has been um, as seen eyes, supported by record job growth and wage increases, yet there's a debate over whether this indicates a soft landing or mass a deeper economic uh, issues that are you know potentially going to happen. Do you guys know that credit card debt is at an all-time record high right now? That should tell us something. And if you look here, stock market S&P 500 is nearing all-time record highs like we're seeing in the Dow and all, reflecting investors' confidence, perhaps a disconnect from the underlying economic fundamentals. Manufacturing data, the manufacturing sectors have shown upticks contributing to the GDP growth, but the broader impact of recession indicators remain debated. But here's the big thing about the GDP. Here's a big problem. GDP... 30% of the GDP is government spending. So how valid is it? And if you were to take in government influence on different sectors, you could argue that up to upwards of 50% of the GDP, government. That is a problem. Inflation and interest rates. With mortgage rates around 7%, and significant increases in everyday goods since 2020. Inflation by is felt, okay? So that's the bottom line. Inflation is here in a big way. Influencing consumer behavior and potentially signaling economic slowdown. So the global migration factors, okay? Record migrant crossings and global economic conditions add layers to the U.S. economy. Outlooking um, outlook potentially affecting labor markets and policy. So there it is. <clears throat> All right. So here are my thoughts. And thank you for making it this far. Give me a like if it doesn't cost you anything to like the video. If you appreciate the information I've given you, at least hit like. It doesn't cost you anything. Subscribe if you want to keep being alerted to us uh, doing that. So anyway, here's the here are my thoughts. My thoughts are that... I haven't seen a couple of things for a recession yet that I want to see. I want to see two negative GDPs, two quarters, okay? Quarter after quarters, negatives. The first negative will be something that I'll be very concerned with, okay? The Because they say if you get two negatives, but by the time the market's already dropping. Sector rotation. Sector rotation. If I give you, uh, well, I, I won't go there right now. But if you go to Finviz and look at groups, I see technology still relatively strong, and I need energy. That If you look at sector rotation, energy gets really hot. I think what we're gonna see is energy become the play in the near future. I think that's coming. And I believe that energy being the play will play a part in saying that the markets are going to be turning over. So if we see technology start to drop, and we see energy start to rise, that will tell me that we have problems on the horizon that look for a market top to be put in when that happens. I already have the inversion, bond yield, I have the SOM rule, I have those things. I have weakening and unemployment, I have those things. For those reasons, we started adding to our bearish positions. So we have that going. We're predominantly in cash, however, we have added a hedge going in to so even though we're you know markets went up today we were bullish today i mean we were profitable today due to our hedge that we have in place so i want to be really careful going into the fed meeting not sure what the markets will do at that my i'd say there's an 80 20 chance i think oh, 75 75 25 75% chance we're going to sell into that news on a rate. It might initially spike, but people will sell into that strength. It's what I think may happen. If that happens, the markets may get really turbulent going into the election. So November election is going to bring a lot of change to the market conditions and we might start to trend again. We've been in an uptrend forever. We're really high in the market. The question is, is it time to give some of that back and retrace with an 18 to 24 month 
pull back in the markets. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. We have to be careful here. I hope you took some cues on what I was saying. Being in cash is a good thing and being prepared for a market drop. I just don't, it'd be crazy to jump into it right now because if you were to jump into that market short right now, wholly and fully, uh, you could have your head handed to you or at least have to drink a lot of Maalox to set through any upside movements that might still be out there. For that reason, I like the cash. For that reason, I'd like to have some exposure to the bear market because I want to be early player in that market because I don't want to miss it. I lived through these crashes and there's money to be made. I'm salivating, licking my chops, waiting for this thing to crash. Add to, if it's going to, add to those short positions and capitalize on that in a big, big way. For the mark, for the world, the economy as a whole, I hope that the recession, if we do have one, is not overly long. I hope it's short-lived and markets bounce back quickly. We'll be here to capitalize on a bounce and buy everything up at big time discounts if and when that happens. <laughs> so if you made it this far, you are crazy. You are one of the crazy ones. Say made it. You and I will know what it is. I want to know where you live. If you're in a different country, let me know what country, if you're what state you are from, and if you are if you're willing to, tell me the city that you're in. I'm very interested in followers and where they're at. I'm saying hello from Tampa, Florida. So for that, love you all. Take care. We'll catch you guys later. Bye. Guys, why are you still here? You just watched my video and now you're still lingering around. Might as well be with you now that I have your undivided attention. <laughs> Listen, if you haven't done so yet, I highly recommend putting in a foundation of trading, your foundation of trading through a mentor. For learning to fly a plane, you wouldn't just go through ground school before you start flying in the friendly skies. What you would be doing though, is going up first with your flight instructor. Same thing if you were gonna learn to ride a bike, you better have somebody behind you helping you ride a bike. Surgery, you're not gonna read a few books and do heart surgery. So every principle and with being guided by a mentor, let finances be this. If you are a trader, you rate you from amateurs to professionals. Mentoring will do that for you. Anyway.